bring on the new year. And I, for one, am very much looking forward to making more videos this year. Yes, sorry I pretty much disappeared from YouTube for a couple weeks in there, but I was busy enjoying my holidays, and I hope everyone else did too. And from here on, I'm going to get back into the schedule, back into posting videos on Tuesday and Saturday as much as possible. I'm adding this little bit of intro on because... Actually, the video you're about to watch, I recorded a month ago now, almost a month ago now, and I'm just getting around to posting it now. And I've chosen to leave the video as it is. I did that for a couple of reasons. I think it's worth remembering where I was a month ago, and to kind of see how I've changed, and... Of course, a lot has changed over the last month. I think what I said almost sets up kind of how and why some of those changes happened. I gave this video the title, Friends in All Kinds of Places, and over the intervening month, I've had the chance to kind of reaffirm that for myself, too. So this video's for all of the people who have reached out to me, all of the people I've reached out to, and all of the people who I'm looking forward to sharing this new year with. And let's make it awesome. And with that past me, please take it away. All right, everyone, let's get started. And welcome to One Night Hot Springs. So this is going to be a little bit different than what I've been doing on the channel so far. Or, you know, a lot different. Even Forgotten Anne, as story-heavy though it might have been, still had a lot of platforming and puzzle kind of elements to it, whereas this is a visual novel. This is all about the story. But I think for today, that's what I want. Right? Because I want to be able to focus on the story and the characters of this game. And I want to take a moment to talk. Right? Because that's what a game like this lets me do. So it lets me focus on the decisions I'm making on the characters, on the story, and get into some detail about them. And maybe in the process, something about myself. Because, as we're going to see from the start here, this is a game about being a transgender woman in Japan. And we have our protagonist here, Haru, answering the phone from her friend, Manami. And we're about to get our invitation. For Haru, Haru has her invitation to go to a birthday party, or not even a birthday party, a birthday vacation. They go on a trip with Manami for her 20th birthday, a trip to the hot springs, which is probably one of the most popular kinds of vacation to take in Japan, but for a transgender woman like Haru, like the hot springs are kind of an uncomfortable place. And so I kind of want to take the chance to talk a little bit about kind of navigating that situation and navigating that kind of thing in general. Because, I mean, for the next however long it takes me to get through this story of one night in the hot springs, I want to let myself 
decidedly be Haru. As much as I can be Haru when I am not myself Japanese. Right? But, you know, it's telling that this is the kind of story that I get so thoroughly sucked into. It's telling that when I think about what separates me from Haru, like, again, worried about making people around me uncomfortable, it seems like one of the same things. And Japanese is that one bit that I focus on that I say this is what's different. But that question of being a transgender woman, I look at that and I ask, is that a difference between me and Haru? Well, maybe we'll have the chance to talk about that. Of course, before I have the chance to talk about that, I have to give myself that chance. And this first decision of the game is a serious decision to make. I like the way this game handles both choices to make here. I like this game in general. I think um, I'm leaving a link to the game page in the description, so please go check it out and try it yourself because it's absolutely worth the time to try. But I'm going to go ahead and give myself the chance to enjoy this night. Enjoy this trip to the hot spring. If they have reserved baths that I can use myself, then I'll go. And I am going to let the auto mode kind of handle forward progress. And I'm also going to skip most of the story of this game. Not most of the story. There's a couple of specific conversations, a couple of specific scenes that I want to focus on more than the rest. And I'm going to go ahead and jump from one point to the next in the story to highlight those scenes specifically and highlight those things that I want to talk about more specifically. So we're going to let Haru prepare for her trip to the hot springs as much as she can. Heaven knows I've gone down the rabbit hole on all kinds of things online which don't always help as much as I might like but hopefully having the chance to talk about this and figuring out figuring it out as I go will be more of a chance to kind of make sense of this situation so right, with that I will jump on ahead to the first point that I'd like to talk about and see you at the hot springs. So we rejoin the story at the point when we're outside the family bath, the reserved baths that this place has available. And of course, the first question we have to ask is, is this okay? And Haru's asking, can, can I do this? Because this is something I've done before. It's very easy to come up with reasons not to push. It's very easy to come up with reasons not to try doing any number of things like this. Right? For me, it's mostly shopping. Right? It's very easy for me to come up with reasons not to go poking my head around the stores that have clothes I want to buy for fear, I suppose. But one of the nice things about having a game like this is that I can take a step back and say, you know what? It's a lot easier 
in a game like this to say, let's, let's do it. Let's try it. Let's see what happens when I make this decision. And it's getting easier to do that in the real world too, but slowly and with some resistance. But as I said, we can explore this decision this way so much more easily, and we're going to. So we're going to take a look at the family bath and try to reserve a time slot so that we can properly enjoy the hot springs for our one night here. But, of course, there's a problem. Are you serious? And that's something that happens far too much, too, is, you know, I'm like, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, and then it doesn't work anyway. But, of course, now the staff has arrived. And now we have to explain what happened and what we're doing. And the staff sends us off to the main bath, which we've kind of, so far, we've rejected. So... This is what's going to lead us into kind of... When I play this game, I told myself I was going to make decisions following a pattern. And this is when we ask ourselves, do you trust this staff member? Do you trust the world around you to react well to the explanation I would have to give here. And when I think about it, like, I have imagined, more than once, I've imagined different moments, all kinds of moments stemming from the idea of being transgender and what you know, what I would do, or what I would, what I have to do, or I've imagined some of these stories about things happening, trying to give this explanation. And kind of like what I was saying before, it's very easy to imagine that story going very badly, with good reason. I won't get into the reasons for that here, but when I think about the ways I imagine that story, that it doesn't always end well. But the theme of the decisions today, what I'm doing when I played this game the first time, what I'm doing when I play this game now is, I'm going to let myself trust. I'm going to say I can trust this person to hear, understand, take the explanation well. And when I give explanations like this, even when I imagine the story going badly, there's something to be said too for... I try to tell this story and imagine... I'm going to, I almost want to dare the world to do its worst, which is a terrible reaction to have, perhaps. But, as it turns out, the staff is not responding that way at all. Which is one of the many reasons why this game is wonderful to play. came to enjoy the hot springs, I will ensure that you can enjoy the hot springs. And for that matter, 
We didn't correct the front desk staff, but we will correct her. This would be fine. And as it turns out, She has an idea. Upgrade to a room with an open air bath, which I can use without using the family baths, without going to the women's baths. The staff member here has found an option that lets us enjoy the hot springs. with a little bit more privacy as well. And yeah, is, is it really okay? Of course. And so now we've gone from the ginkgo room to the azalea room. And can try to enjoy our stay. Courtesy of, as she said, this nice person, the nice staff member who has gone maybe a little bit out of her way to try and accommodate what Haru's looking for. Coming to the conclusion that maybe the world is kinder than I thought it was. And yeah. A Japanese hotel like this one is really, really nice. I've been in this kind of hotel before. If not, I haven't really been to the hot spring town recently anyway, but hotels like this are indeed really nice, and it's definitely worth enjoying this. But that's kind of the last point to make here with this moment, is that you kind of have to say, I'm going to let myself enjoy this. It is okay to relax, to make the most of the situation, to take this moment and properly enjoy our time here at the Hot Springs. It goes back to that question of saying, what do you imagine when you tell this kind of story? And so many times I imagine stories that, yeah, that I'm reluctant to share just because they're not very comfortable stories. But one of the things that's nice is to take a moment like this one and see this hot spring bath that's, I can promise, it's been a long time, but it is exactly as comfortable as Haru's making it out to be. And at least in my experience, it was. And it's nice to take this moment and say, sometimes these stories do end well. It's nice to take a moment and say, this time, this time, the story ended exactly as we wanted it to. And with that, I'm going to jump on ahead once again, so we'll get back to you when I rejoin the story. Rejoin the story after 
dinner is finished, Haru, Erika, and Manami have finished eating, and Manami is busy sleeping off the results of her dinner, which gives Erika her good opportunity. Her good opportunity to talk with us directly. Since she has questions, but as she says, Manami was being all sensitive about it. Which is understandable, and it's a great reaction on Manami's part to be, want to protect Haru as much as possible. But of course, I also want to be able to talk about it. I want people to be able to understand when I talk about how I'm feeling. I want to be able to talk about how I'm feeling. And certainly Erica seems to be setting this up as best she can. But, as Haru says, it's, it's something I don't talk about. I have a really hard time talking about it much with anyone. And I think it goes back a little bit to that question of trust, where I want to be able to trust that the world around me is going to react the way they should, quote unquote. But it's almost easier to trust the world as a thing. It's almost easier to go out, you know, wearing what I want into the city of Tokyo right, with thousands, with millions of people around me. And that's kind of easier to handle than the idea of going to someone I know personally and going into any amount of detail about it. it the, the idea of saying, you know, what should we talk about? Let's, you know, the idea of talking about it is kind of frightening. But that's what we're here to do. I'd like to practice talking about these things. And hopefully Erica can give us that chance. And it's it's interesting to point out, of course, that it's not something you can tell. Like especially when I kind of don't talk about how I'm feeling at all. It's not like anyone's ever really going to look at me and tell anything about what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, how I feel about names, like Haru talking about her nickname, and Erika slipping up here and there. Which is not necessarily surprising. Hopefully, one of the things that I think this can serve well for is hopefully to help provide some of the education. And one of the things it did for me, too, was to provide that, too. And this, it kind of highlights a little bit how even the well-meaning discussions, even well-meaning expressions of support don't always land the way you want them to. So it's something I, again, I struggle with a little bit where I'm always worried that I'm going to say the wrong thing. In this case, as much as I kind of try to fit myself into Haru's shoes here in this story, I'm also, in this case, I'm almost more Erika, where I'm almost more standing here thinking, I want to talk about it, but I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to make things worse for the people around me. And that's... Again, one of the challenges I face. 
And this also, too, is when we get into more of the education that this has to offer about the legal situation in Japan. Spoiler alert, it's not good. Um, but, I mean, in a lot of ways, it feels like, from what I've been through here, it feels like any LGBT awareness is just very low in Japan, as far as I can tell. And certainly, specifically, awareness of transgender issues feels mostly non-existent in Japan. And that's, well, I mean, that's what ideally videos like this can hopefully accomplish, is to make things more well-known, I guess. And Erika has the chance to say, you know, I hope I didn't make you uncomfortable. Which, again, the point of this, one of the points of this in a lot of ways, is to have the chance to talk about it. So, of course, this is what I want to say. I want to say... Right. Thanks. Hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for giving me this chance. And that sets up one of the reasons why I like Etika so much. One of the reasons why I feel like, again, some of the ways that Etika acts in this game is kind of something I feel like I would like to be able to do myself a little bit more aggressive perhaps right? about going after what I want and certainly Erica has no problem going after what she wants right? there's that aggressive streak that I think I kind of like. And here, it's going to give us the choice to actually go into the main women's baths. Which, Haru is definitely worried about, for good reason. It's kind of, again, one of the biggest choices in a game where the entire point is making these choices, going through these decision points. It sets up that big decision where I have to say, don't you want to enter the women's baths? Is this what I want? I feel like that has a correct answer for myself. Right? I feel like it's hard to express the answer I want to give, whether just because of right, the part of me. Right? Anyone who's watched my Celeste videos should know what part of me I'm referring to. Right? That wants to say that this isn't an option. And yet, when I think about the idea of rejecting that option, of closing the door on that path, I don't like that idea. So, certainly, and certainly, 
in this game, there's only one choice I'm going to make here. Right? This is, again, one of the reasons why I enjoy taking a moment to try to find some reflection of myself in a game like this one. But the decision has to be made outside this game, too. And that's a decision I am far from making outside games like this one. But, as I said, I know which decision I'm going to make here. And it has to be that one. I am going to skip on past at least the opening of the trip to the women's baths, but we will be rejoining the story momentarily. So, and we rejoin Erika and Haru in the women's baths as threatened, with a chance for Erika to talk a little bit more about school life and Haru and Erika talk a little bit more about school life and this is one thing that's kind of uncomfortable for me just because I feel like I don't remember much of my school life at all I mean, certainly I didn't act the way I th people thought I should act I, mean, I was definitely an outsider in school but I don't know that I was an outsider for this reason. Maybe, again, maybe more like what we're about to get from Erica. Although, obviously, Erica went to an all-girls school, which I most definitely did not. Nor was I a delinquent. Right? I was too far in the other direction, right? where I was too good. That's the wrong way to put it, but I'm not sure there's a better way to put it. I, I definitely didn't fit in at school. And there are consequences for that. Right? I don't know that... Again, I don't really remember what that was like, but I'm not sure I would call it bullying. Maybe I'm... Yeah. Yeah. I want, to, I want to say the same thing. It wasn't that bad. But it's kind of frustrating to talk about or think about much when I feel like I don't know how bad it was, even now. And Erika has her depressing speech about how things are in high school, about fitting in, right? and, you know, I like this advice and I don't like this advice. Right? I don't want to not care about it, but I think there's something to be said for just enjoy yourself and let people make of it what you will. Again, it goes back to what I said about trusting the world around you and saying I'm going to do what's right for me and the rest of the world can deal with it or not as it chooses. Right? Because this is what I have to do to enjoy myself. And I'm going to do that. Like, I'm fairly determined now, right? And even before I started recording things like this, but I'm fairly determined now to do what I want to do, enjoy myself for myself, and not worry too much about the people around me. But of course... We do have to ask about the people around me, how the people around me, well, how I feel about, in this case, very specifically, Manami. Right? Manami and Erika, although honestly, I've skipped showing off much of Manami in this video, not necessarily intentionally, but like the focus of this was always going to be one of Erika's endings to the game, 
Because, again, I kind of want to spend mo time with Erika more than I want to spend time with Monami, which is why I'm not going to openly say, yes, definitely, I'm in love with Monami. In good part, because I'm, like, again, she's a great friend, but I don't know that I'm in love with Monami as Haru, the way this story is presented. Which is why the game is set up for Erica to respond well to that in turn. Hey, and Erica has her chance to express more about her own character. We missed, by the way, from the dinner, we missed Erica talking about being um, vegetarian. Right. So now we get the chance to talk about Erica again, Erica talking about being bisexual. But again, kind of saying, I don't really care much for the label. I'm just kind of doing what I want to do here. And that's again, it's a message worth holding on to, I think. Also, I've totally done that with my towel. For the record. I thought you said you wouldn't look. We we skipped that discussion, but hmm. but you do look cute. Okay, I'm heading into one of the vase tubs by myself. Uh, like I said, it's also nice to have some of these light-hearted moments, nice moments, enjoyable moments, and again, have the chance to say that. This one night at the hot springs went well. Thank you for bringing me along. This is the way the story was supposed to go. The way the way we wanted the story to go that we could properly enjoy rather than you know, me telling another story that doesn't end as well as I might want it to. And on that note, the staff member's back who upgraded our room and who asks us flat out if we went into the women's baths. And we've already decided we're going to trust. So that makes that decision fairly straightforward. Again, giving people the chance to respond well and having that moment where you know actually the staff gets to say this isn't that uncommon or isn't uncommon at least I'm very pleased to hear that you could enjoy the baths and I hope you have a pleasant night knows. She totally knows. And that's kind of our good mo our big moment of validation that this story is set up to provide. Once more, I'm going to jump on ahead, although there's very little left to skip, but once more I'm going to jump on ahead through the rest of the story. And we rejoin the story at the very end, now that Erica has invited us out to go out on town, or more like suggested that we've decided to go out around town with her, let Manami go out with her boyfriend, and of course Manami's worried because she is that kind of friend. And Manami's asking, will you be okay? Which sets up that last decision of the game where we can say that, yes, I'll be fine. Manami. Everything is fine. Right? The decision to 
trust to trust the hotel staff to trust Erica were both the right decisions to make and it's given us the chance to have more of a heart to heart have several kind of heartfelt discussions and I was like okay so that's what we're doing but of course Erica is still Erica and she's still awesome but if I didn't say anything, you would have just agreed, right? So, we get to enjoy Erica's company a little bit more. And we get to say that, again, that going forth, reaching out, trusting the people around us ended well, right? With the two people here that have made this one night at the hot springs so worthwhile. And as it turns out, too, the hotel staff here who has been helping us out earlier has a couple more surprises in store about her older sister. This is one of those kind of almost like it's a nice moment here and kind of a bittersweet moment where it's no personally knowing someone who is transgender seems to make so much of a difference. And it's pretty cool that this hotel staff was there to make to offer that advice and to help make that night at the hot springs worthwhile there's people out there in all kinds of places that are trustworthy and it's frightening to test the world but as it turns out, at least here, in this moment, for this game, for this one night at the Hot Springs, as that ending revealed, the world can be kind, too. When I first played this game, that was the first ending I got. I made all of the same decisions, you know, playing through this to talk about it, I made all of the same decisions now that I did then and at the time and now it's a message I think I would do well to remember that I don't need to imagine the worst case scenario all the time that I can go out and do what I want and give the world a chance to demonstrate that it can be kind to. Car carefully, right? right? There's certainly reason to be careful about doing that. But for this one night in this game at the Hot Springs, we can do this. And as I go forward and keep writing my story, maybe I'll be able to do the same. So I'll leave a link to the page for this game in the description. So please, if you want to see more of this, go check it out. It is absolutely worth, absolutely worth your time to and your money to devote to a game like this and maybe try to enjoy that one night in the hot springs along with me, with Haru, with everyone else who has ever thought about these kind of things. Thank you all so much for watching and 
I'll see you all next time. Until then.